Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be going over phylogenies, phylogenetic trees, and the origin of land plants. So before we begin, we need to understand what exactly is a phylogeny. A phylogeny is the evolutionary history of a group of organisms' relationships. Phylogenies are used in all aspects of biology and provides a basis for um, classification as well as provides the framework for understanding evolutionary characteristics. So a phylogenetic tree is a hypothesis of how a species evolved from a series of common ancestors. Let's keep in mind that a species with a recent common ancestor are closely related. We will now construct a phylogenetic tree. We will start at the root, which represents a sequence of ancestors that have developed into the most recent common ancestor of all the species represented in the tree. From the root, we will draw a lineage, which is a series of ancestor and descendant populations shown as a line. A speciation event occurs when a single lineage divides into two, showing a split in our tree. That split is known as a node. Each descendant population gives rise to a new lineage, which continues to evolve. A clade is an ancestor and all descendants of that ancestor. From the phylogenetic tree that we drew, which one would you consider a clade? A, B, or C? Let's go over our answers. It helps me to think that a group is a clade if I can detach that group from the rest of the phylogenetic tree with a single cut. Now, if a group requires more than one cut, it is not considered a clade. So let's look at C. I can detach C from the rest of the phylogenetic tree with a single cut right here, making C a clade. For B, I can also remove B from the rest of the phylogenetic tree with a single incision right here, making B a clade. Now, for A, we would have to make two incisions. One incision right here, and one incision right here, to remove group A from the rest of the phylogenetic tree. So that means A is not a clade. Finally, a synapomorphy is a shared derived trait that provides evidence of a common ancestor of a group. As the name implies, land plants have adaptations that allow them to live on the land. These adaptations, or synapomorphies, include our cuticle, which is a waxy covering that prevents the plant from drying up and keeps water inside the plant. Um, pigments, which absorb different wavelengths of light and controls UV radiation. Sporopollenin, which protects the spore once it's been dispensed by the plant, gametangia, which produces and protects the different gametes such as eggs and sperm, and finally the mycorrhizae, which is a symbiotic relationship plants have with fungi that helps with nutrient uptake, such as nitrogen. The aforementioned adaptations can be found throughout all the land plants that we will discuss. The first group of land plants that we'll be talking about is our bryophytes. Our bryophytes consist of our liverworts, our mosses, and our hornworts. Our bryophytes are also known as our non-vascular land plants because they lack a true vascular transport system. Our mosses and our hornworts are the only bryophytes that contain a stomata, while our liverworts do not have a stomata. The next group of land plants that we'll be talking about is our lycophytes. The lycophyte synapomorphy includes microphylls, or a single leaf that's unbranched. Our lycophytes also have a dominant sporophyte generation, strobili, or um, groups of sporangium at the tip, and they have true dichotomous branching roots. Next is our manilophytes, which include our horsetails and our ferns. Their synapomorphies include our megaphylls, which are large multivascular leaves, leaf gaps in the stem where leaves emerge, and differentiation between the main stem and the side branches. Gymniosperms are known as our naked seed plants because of their exposed ovules. Their synapomorphies include seeds, woody secondary growth, and heterospory. Our gymniosperms include our cycads, our ginkgos, our nidophytes, and our conifers. Angiosperms are known as our flowering plants, and their synapomorphies include flowers, fruits, and double fertilization. Our next group of land plants that we'll be discussing is our vascular plants, and they include our lycophytes, manilophytes, cycads, ginkgos, nidophytes, conifers, and flowering plants. Their synapomorphies include a branching independent sporophyte, 
internal conduction of water via trichids in the xylem, and internal conduction of sucrose via sieve cells in the phloem. Our euphilophytes are known as our true leaf plants as a result of their megaphils, or leaves with venation. Their synapomorphies include multi-flagellated sperm and in, in roots with endogenous branching. Our euphilophytes include our manilophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. Our seed plants include our gymnosperms and our angiosperms, and their synapomorphy includes seeds and secondary growth. Based on the phylogenetic tree that we just created, which of the following groups would you consider to be a clade? Our land plants, our bryophytes, manilophytes, gymnosperms, angiosperms, vascular plants, euphilophytes, or seed plants. Take a moment to pause the video and write down which groups are and are not a clade. So, all of these groups can be considered a clade, except for our bryophyte group. And the reason why is, if you go back to our previous demonstration, you would have to make two incisions to remove our bryophyte group from the rest of the phylogenetic tree, making the bryophyte group not a clade. For the exam, you should have this phylogenetic tree memorized. Remembering the order will allow you to know which groups have what synapomorphies. Looking at our phylogenetic tree, notice that the plants become more complex with the increasing branching. To help you remember this, use the following phrase to remember the non-seeded plants. Little, Moses, hates, long, haired, ferns. Little for liverworts, Moses for mosses, hates for hornworts, long for lycophytes, haired for horsetails, and ferns for ferns. And for the seeded plants, Remember, Sid gained gold coins flowering plants. Sid for cycads, gained for ginkgo, gold for neophytes, coins for conifers, and flowering plants for flowering plants. And that's our video on phylogenies and land plants. Thanks for watching. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.